What is an annual marriage check-in? As we're getting the new year started, it's a great time to take stock of your marriage. What's going well? What's just not working? I love something Christina said on a recent podcast, that when your marriage is reflected in your budget, your calendar, your thoughts, and your prayers, then it is a top priority. This fruitful practice can help you make the most of your marriage and your life together. If you're new to this show, we drop a new episode every Tuesday, and on the last Tuesday of the month, it's a special guest interview. So be sure to hit subscribe in whatever podcast app you're using so you can join us every week. Hey guys, I want to step in for just a second and welcome you, but also to welcome Lindsay Few as our new co-host of Awesome Marriage. Lindsay has been with Awesome Marriage for a long time. She is my editor and been my editor forever. Uh, She's awesome. I think you guys are going to love her. Christina with her job as COO of Awesome Marriage. Now we've got her with doing a lot of tasks. And I was so excited when Lindsay said I would step up and be the co-host on this. So Lindsay, welcome. Thank you. It's fun to be here. (laughs) Okay, let's get into (laughs) this annual marriage stuff. Yeah, I want to hear from you, Dr. Kim. What do you and Nancy do? Do you do a a yearly check-in? We really do. And I don't know that it's that structured. I kind of think we've um, always kind of gone through the steps that we do in my book, Seven Secrets to an Awesome Marriage. We we look at the the insanity. Is there anything that's holding Mm -hmm. us back? Is there something that we're doing in our marriage? And things like that have come up. We got in a really bad habit of... um, being our phones were in the car together where we used to talk and we realized that and said, okay, we're going to use that time that we're in the car together to talk like we used to and not one of us driving, the other doing something on their phone. So we, we kind of look at anything that's holding us back. Um, then we look at how are we, how are we doing as far as putting God first and each other second and just sharing that, you know, what are, what are we doing that? How's that working? We ask, are we connecting well? You know, what gets in the way of connecting? There are some obstacles that we've let creep in that keep us from connecting, communicating as well as we need to. Um, And then if we have conflict, how are we handling it? We handle it in so much better than we used to. I think most of the time we handle it in a respectful manner, which we didn't used to do that very well at all. So how are we doing when we have conflict? Um, the balance in our marriage, are we, are we having enough time together? What about with friends, you know, family, how does that balance work? Are we putting maybe time and effort into areas that aren't really our top priorities? You know, we, have we let some other things creep in, creep in that we need to say no to, uh, sex life. How's it doing? Is it drawing us closer together? Does it continue to do what we've wanted it to do our whole marriage? And then, um, uh, we also say, are we, are we on the same team? Is there anything that makes you want to wear a different jersey? You know, which we've never said that, but <laughs> you know, you could, you know, why do we need to be working together as a team? So that those seven secrets have fit real well for us of just kind of looking at the year of how we, the, where we are right now and then looking at what do we do next. That's so good. That's so good. And I like to use that format, the seven secrets format, because it's like it's so much helpful to have something to go off of. Well, I think it covers, you know, what I would, if I was counseling somebody, that's pretty much what I would say to them. That's kind of the way to do this. This is the, this is where you're going to, uh, this structure will help you cover most of the things that are really important in your marriage relationship. That's really good. That's really good. So, um, what does that look like? You said it wasn't necessarily such a structured thing. Do you guys make a date out of it? What do you, how do you do this? We just usually sit down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and talk about it. And I don't know, we don't have a like set day. Honestly, usually it's, it's probably after it's usually on our anniversaries when we do it, which is January 2nd. Um, and so we're not trying to cram it into Christmas and all the stuff that goes on there. And and we might do it a different time, but we definitely do it by our anniversary or on our anniversary. And that's kind of our marker. That's kind of helpful to have our anniversary where it is because it's kind of like, it's kind of a natural way to reminisce, look at old pictures and then to kind of say, Hey, where are we? That's cool. That's good. I like that because it's like you're you're choosing a time that you're naturally going to remember, yes. but it's also not in the middle of like the Christmas season, just a lot. Well, yeah, so, you don't yeah. want it just a box that you check off and say, okay, yeah. we got it. We got some more shopping to do. We the bulbs are out on part of the tree. Yeah. Blah blah blah. <laughs> oh yeah, and we got to evaluate our marriage. You know, right. just, you, you don't want to do that. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't done this really in, in our marriage. We've done some kind of beginning of the year practices, but the thing that made me think about this, I think you might've mentioned this in a recent podcast, but we also have this marriage resource called the annual marriage checkup. Yes. So I, I'm thinking of that. And I'm like, gosh, that's a really good one. And it's newer. It's a newer one. Um, and I'm thinking, Okay, so you want to start with with trying out this practice. Where do you start? And I'm asking for myself because <laughs> yeah. I just want to know, you know. 
So what's the benefit? Why, why should couples check in on their marriage each year? Well, I think a number of reasons. We all change. We all grow. And I think our marriages can improve every year. I want my marriage to be better this in 2022 than it was in 2021. And so I think if you evaluate where you are, you kind of have a plan for growth. And I think every couple needs that because I think it's easy to get stagnant. It's easy to let, we talk so much about distractions, but we talk about it a lot because it's such a part of our lives. And it seems like there's new distractions that get in all the time. Look at the, you know, distractions that we didn't have even before COVID of, you know, all the divisiveness and things like that, which really can get very distracting to what you're trying to do in your marriage. So I think the benefit of is taking time to be intentional about it and, and saying, okay, how do we grow this next year? What are the markers? Where do we want to be this time in December, 2022 from where we are in January, 2022? That's so good. That's so good. The intentionality makes such a difference, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I, I, we, if we're not intentional, we don't get much done. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, if I can, I can have all these hopes and dreams and all this kind of stuff, but if I don't take an action step, they just, they're just that they just okay. don't happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Here's something else I'm curious about with this check-in. So uh, you also, you mentioned the weekly check-in a lot and that's like one of the, you know, highest recommended things. So why are they both helpful? Kind of what's the difference? What's, what's similar why should we be doing both of these? Yeah, I think the weekly thing that we do helps um, helps in communication. It lets you talk about some things that are practical for that week, for that day. It also helps you plan for the coming week. Um, and and I think it's it's just a really good tool that you can use in that way. And I think the um, the weekly marriage checkup or not the other one is to to look more at the bigger picture, the Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to be for the whole year. And so the things, what I've found for us, the things that we talk about each week are connected to the things we talk about for the year. Hmm. And so Mm -hmm. if if we're having a week and in part of our talking, um, I don't know, there's some obstacles, things come up and everything. It gives a chance to refine that now because we've set kind of our goals for the entire year. So I think for me, for us, I think a weekly checkup keeps us on track to do what we decided to do that we want to do in an annual thing. That's good. So you could almost use it together, like bring those annual kind of goals or pieces and yes. keep and them th- in front of you. Yeah. And I, th- I think for both of them, it, it's a way to put God in the middle of your relationship, you know, because he, you know, we can make, I want to make the plans that Nancy and I have consistent with what God has for us. And oh, yeah. so if I'm leaving God out of that equation and even our evaluations, um, I don't think that's, that's good. It doesn't help me much if I'm going a different direction than God wants me to go. Yeah. Yeah. When I feel like it without sort of this bigger vision, um, check-in, I think it's just so easy to be real busy. Like our weekly check-in right now is a lot of, uh, who's driving, which kid, where, at what time. And yeah, back to back, everything's like going places and it's good stuff. We're having a lot of fun with it, but if we're not careful, we can really get caught up in just that stuff, you know, and and kind of lose sight. The bigger picture. Yeah, I, I think so. That's a good example. You guys have four kids. You've got, they're getting older. They're active. Um, mm-hmm. You're a pastor's wife. Brian's a pastor. So you've mm-hmm. got all these things that you guys have to deal with all the time. And so sometimes just getting um, things down on paper, what your what your schedule looks like for the week is really helpful. And, and yeah. it also helps you see time to carve out for each other and for family. Mm-hmm. And, and if, and if you look at their schedule of the week and there's no time for family or no time for you guys alone as a couple, then I think it's assigned to you guys to say, we got to do something different. This, yes. this is not good. We can't just keep going week after week surviving. And that's what I think we do a lot of times. We just, oh, I'm mm-hmm. going through another week. Oh, and mm-hmm. I can sleep this weekend or I can yeah. rest or, <laughs> or whatever, you know? Yeah. I know. I was talking to a friend yesterday who kept, who said, um, of something I've said a million times, which is like, yeah, I think, you know, when things slow down a little bit soon, it, when the next season, my kids sleep through the night or whatever. And I was going, I, I don't want to sound discouraging, but I don't think things really slow down. No, <laughs> I don't I, know when that happens. Yeah. I don't either. Cause I was, I did that to myself yesterday. I was, uh, we're finishing a big project that you've been involved in the marriage 911 video series. And I was thinking, Oh, when that's done, I'll have time. I can kind of go back and start working on the brain book that I work on. And then I thought, it's not going to slow down. There'll be other things. I mean, yeah. it just is. And so I think it's it's learning to prioritize and to 
you know, just make sure there's balance in your life. That's good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. It reminds me too of something, 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 It says your mic isn't isn't is on mute. Can you hear me at all? Yeah. It I says my hear. browser lost connection to the mic. That was weird because you just um, you I'm just back the, into audio the, to see if it'll like two or three back. words that you're saying just went over and over and over Have and over. Have you seen and over. this happen? At having Christina before. I can't hear you either. Um. Uh, so weird. Can you hear me now? No. Um, nothing okay. changed on this end, but it just kind of seems like it disconnected. Okay. Uh, you can't hear me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, now it's connecting. Now it's detecting my scarlet again. Let's see if I can reconnect here. Okay. Tap again. That is yeah. Weird. Can you what now? What happened? Can yeah. I, I, it it uh, and this happened to Christina a couple uh, a couple times where you said whatever you said it kept repeating that over and over like oh. hello 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 uh -huh. hello and you were kept talking but all I was getting audio wise was was that that was so, so weird weird yeah it just it my, the Chrome is giving me a little notification it says that just disconnected from the Scarlet I don't know how that can happen when it's plugged in. That's crazy because the scarlet has crazy. no power or anything on its own. Yeah, that's super weird. I'm gonna have to look into that, but I've heard it happen to you guys with. Um, yeah, you've been there. So weird. Yeah, yeah, it is really weird. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, well, let's pick up. Let's see. I can't remember the last thing that we said. Uh, no, oh, I can't even see it here on Audacity. It's repeated. Uh, yeah. Weird. Oh, no, no, we've got an internal error. I think we have to you go to a new file, which is okay. Okay. On, on you know, I'll go to a new on Audacity. I'll do the same thing so okay. then it'll be easier to match, okay? Okay. I'll export this one. Well, okay. If you haven't already done it, you don't need to because I'll be able to see that glitch. Okay, okay. It's visually very obvious. <laughs> it's really weird. Okay. Oh, no, I'm getting an error message. You may have to, sometimes on Audacity you have to, close it out and then come okay. back in maybe that's what it is it, that's a quirk and i haven't figured out how to get around that yet hmm yeah I, i'm i'm like pretty baffled right now i don't know what to do with this okay so this is check in was it yeah audacity th that's the one thing about it i it's great i i like using it but sometimes it gets a little glitchy yeah i've had a couple times where it won't open a file and then it gets um hung up kind of all right I'm, I'm just maybe there's something i haven't learned yet about the scarlet that i've got to got to well scarlet i do. mean it's really pretty yeah that's what i was trying to think um okay we're back i'm good okay and you're back on audacity back on mm -hmm. you remember where Should we quit um we were talking about getting distracted getting hung up oh i was i was gonna say a part it reminded me of a devotional i did Okay, you want to pick up there, and then you can. Yeah, I think I think we can transition back in pretty pretty easily from there. Um, okay. So this actually reminds me of something in my devotional this morning. I was reading from my utmost for his highest by Oswald mm -hmm. Chambers, and he talks about how when you're on a missionary for Jesus, the biggest temptation is to be distracted by all the people around you because yeah. the needs are just endless, and you can really lose sight of just being with Christ and having that relationship. So this kind of reminds me of the same theme of checking back in, balance and priorities, not getting hung up because there's always so much going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, another tool I think that we have that might 
help people as they're as they're doing this is our marriage multiplier that comes mm-hmm. out yeah. um, each week. And in that it's it's real simple. Uh, I know a lot of people subscribe to the one thing, but this is a weekly thing. And it'd be something you could sit down with as you do your weekly guide. It's really just an idea for me, a challenge to accomplish, a resource and a question. And so it's very, very simple, but it's a way to be intentional about your marriage every week. And I think when you uh, subscribe to that, you get the marriage checkup guide free, right? You do. You get the weekly marriage checkup guide for free. And then that one you can continue to copy and use it over Mm -hmm. and over and over. Like Yeah. Yeah. Total bang for your buck there because it's free, but also the marriage multiplier covers a lot of different territory, but it's super brief and simple. I love that. Yeah. And I think one thing I thought of the marriage checkup, and I know a lot of us don't even have printers anymore because everything's in technology. But if you had printers, it would be cool to print a bunch of those off and then use them each week and then keep them for a year and then kind of look back and see what progress you've made over the year. What were you talking yeah. about 10 months ago as opposed to what you're talking about now? And just kind of another way to just kind of evaluate. It's kind of a fun way to do that. I think I want it to be fun. I don't want all these, I want this to move your marriage forward and not to be a, a burden on somebody when they think, oh, I got to do this. No, this is something that we enjoy doing together. It gives us time together and we're seeing the results of it. That's so good. Yeah, that's really good. That's a fun yeah. idea too. Yeah. Well, so that, that speaks in it. My next question was for those of us, some of us really dread things like our yearly doctor checkup. <laughs> what would you say to someone who dreads this kind of checkup? I would say if you're kind of where a lot of us are at one time or another, that my marriage really isn't exactly where I want it to be. I think it could be better. I would challenge you to try it for three months and, mm-hmm. and do it consistently for three months. And then after that, if it hadn't helped your marriage, then quit doing it. But I think, I believe it will. And I believe it motivates you to keep doing that. And really just taking a few minutes, maybe you choose, oh, Nancy, a good, good time during the week for us is Sunday afternoon. Cause there's usually, we try not to schedule anything. There's not distractions. It's really just time to hang out and maybe with grandkids or stuff like that. But just invest a few minutes every Sunday. Even if you just invest 10 minutes, you're going to see a payoff in that. So I would encourage you to, to take that step and and see what god can do and pray before say god i don't want to do this you know i don't want to do this i don't know if she or he wants to do it or not but we've agreed to do it so would you work in that would you would you um show up and 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 show us what you can do with just this little bit of time that we're giving to this that's good that's really good yeah yeah so what does this look like for a couple who's doing pretty well right now they're they're in a pretty good spot okay hold on Uh oh you got real soft. Uh, I don't know. Okay, it looks like on my end. Oh, now I'm you're still, fine. Oh, maybe yeah. I was just too far away. Okay, you're back. Did I, lean, I might have leaned back and not known it. Uh, okay, go ahead and ask that question again. Right. And we'll... Yeah. So what does this look like for a couple who's doing pretty well right now? You know, um, it took me a long time to realize you couldn't coast in marriage. I really wanted to get it right and think, Phew. I don't have to do anything else. You know, just keep doing what I'm doing. But when times are good, I think we have a tendency to do that. But we have to keep doing the things that got us to where we are. So if you're doing good, don't get lazy on the things that got you there. Don't give up your weekly checkup. Don't give up your quality time that you have together every day. Don't give up your date nights. Those are the things that help you get where you are. Don't give up praying together and some things like that. And so... Um, I think it's easy for us to get complacent, you know, or to go on, okay, especially as guys, well, I conquered that. I'm going to go do something else. And yet, you know, I tell guys all the time, you have to continue to pursue your wife. You've got to continue to be intentional about your marriage also. That's good. That's really good. Uh, it's always a good reminder and a good encouragement. And okay. Now what about the couple who's really in a rough place? If this is like, if it's going to be, you're afraid you're going to fight when you sit down, like you're having a hard time. How do you approach this? Yeah, I, it, it's hard. The first steps are always so hard. But I do think making making the decision we are going to do this is a step forward. It's a baby step. It's a way for you guys to connect. It's a way to get on the same page. It's a way to understand each other better. And I would just say, God, God, just help us in this. Help us to begin to connect in this way as we as we look at our marriage. Um, and if you start getting in an argument, I would say stop, back off. Mm-hmm pray, come back and try it again. If, if you continue to get stuck, maybe a trip or two to a marriage counselor can help you get through some of those things. But I think it's worth persevering and doing it because uh, it's not 
unfortunately, we just don't get better on our own. Mm. Just time, you know, some things do heal with time passing. You know, I had a, with the dermatologist and they got half my leg, not, they did they got a little, <laughs> chunk, a little deal on my leg. And I thought, this is never going to heal because it seems like things heal slower on our legs. Mm. But it did. It finally healed. So some things do heal on their own with time passage. I don't think a marriage does. I think mm. you've got to continue to invest in it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I love too what you said earlier. If you just are not not looking forward to this at all, just give it a try for three months. You yeah. don't have to suffer forever, but if it works, then you're great. You're in a better spot. If it doesn't, then try something different. Yeah. And I think good. you know, three months is a is a good gauge. And my our, our prayer is that you know that does help and it's and you say, Well, yeah, this is pretty easy. We can continue yeah. to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's get a little more practical now. So how do you suggest couples do this annual marriage checkup? Well, I love our tool that you guys have created on our team. I think the the annual one uh, goes in more depth. I thought I had a copy of it pulled up mm -hmm. here, but it, it goes in more depth. It um, it's just really good. And so I I think that tool in itself, uh, yeah, here it is. I want to look at it real quick. But it, it kind of guides you through you. It helps you start out with prayer, um, the questions. How are you pursuing God? How's your friendship, community? There's scriptures, there's questions, communication, conflict, problem solving, sex, um, money, parenting together, family life, overall. So, and, and it ends with, how can I be a better husband, better wife, those kind of things. And, it, and it's very thoughtful and it will mm -hmm. take some time. This isn't like the weekly checkup. I think if you're the more, if you can set aside really a couple hours together and, and don't rush through it. And if you need to set a couple of times to do that, but I think you will see the benefit. I think you'll learn from each other just as you answer the questions that are in there from each other. And so it is such a good investment in your marriage for 2022 to take the time to do this. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I love that you mentioned learning from each other and learning about each other rather than just kind of doing this like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Or, you know, right. we need to change, but actually being having that curiosity and learning about each other is so helpful. Yeah, I think we have to get past the thing that difference is bad. Our differences mm. is the way God made us, and our differences are not necessarily bad. We just mm -hmm. learn need to learn how to value those and embrace those in our spouse. That's and, good. That's yeah. Good. And so it, it, a lot of that comes when you're doing that, you got to listen really well. You're going to, you want to learn about each other in this time. It's mm. not a time to point out, well, you're not doing that. When are you going to start doing that? But yeah. you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, no, we're, we're learning, we're growing, we're a team. How do we make our marriage better? Yeah. That's so good. So practically, what are some good practical tips to making this happen? You kind of spoke to that a little bit. Yeah. I think you have to, you got to have a starting point. Mm -hmm. And so I think you've got to set a time and a date and put it on your calendar. And you've got, to, I think you've got to say, we are not letting anything, you know, unless there's an emergency, we're not letting anything take over this time. Um, so I think it's, um, this is really an important thing that you do. And so you want to treat it that way. You mm -hmm. want to treat it like this is one of the big priorities in our life. Um, and I think setting that good time to talk is more than just setting a time. It's making the atmosphere good to talk and to listen to each other. So that mm -hmm. means get rid of your distractions, whatever that is. Certainly got all the technology things. Most likely if you have kids, you're, you're parking them somewhere for a while while you do this. Um, <laughs> And, and then as you continue to go through this and make things happen, continue to evaluate it. And so I think all of those things are very important, but I think the way you start, the way you lay it out, the, your, the way you begin to build that foundation is really makes a big difference on how you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That, that check-in guide that we have, you're not going to have um, like one hour or one dinner or one date night. Right. To knock that out. It's it's a lot of thoughtful questions. So you're going to have to be thinking ahead about how to make that happen. And, you know, it's in, it's divided in sections. Maybe you just take a section at a time. And, and just because uh, we're talking about this in January doesn't mean you have to all, have it all done by sure. the end of January. You can take your time. So if you want to take, say, this week we're going to look at problem solving and you do the seven or eight questions there and you talk about that, that's great. Break it yeah. down however works for you uh, so you don't rush through it and so you really get the most out of it. 
Yeah, that's so good. It's never a bad time to take a good proactive step. It's never, never the wrong time. No. You know, if, you, if you've got the time, you could do it in March, in August, whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, it is. You know, and, and maybe some people decide kind of like we do, you do an anniversary. Maybe your mm -hmm. anniversary is in March or June or September and you wanted that to be your annual checkup. Make mm -hmm. it then. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. So, yeah, I think, I think that there's a lot, just a lot of wisdom in taking, taking the time to do this. And again, I want to remind like our, that quote that I quoted from Christina from the podcast a couple months ago, where she talks about if your marriage is on your, your calendar, or I think she said, if your marriage is on your schedule, your mind, your budget and your prayers, then it is actually a top priority. And Absolutely. I think a lot of times we're trying to muscle through or just make it through without prioritizing it. Um, so having the wisdom to just take a little initiative and be proactive in this, Absolutely. I think will really pay off. It makes so. such a difference. I can learn that years ago, I was in a, in a uh, training session and the guy who was leading it, and this was back when we, we had these, our calendars were paper calendars, you know, that I had the <laughs> book that fold over it, had all the yeah. dates in it. And so he was sitting there talking to us about priorities and stuff. And he said, he had us go around everybody side priorities. Well, 90% of the people said, God, spouse, family. And so after everybody went around, he said, okay, open your calendars and show me on there where you have God, spouse, and family plugged in to your calendar. And it hit me then, yeah. Yeah. I look at my calendars. No one would know I am married or have kids or I, I believe in God because there's nothing that reflects that on my calendar. And so to me, that said, you've got to be intentional. Those, if those people are important to you, they've got, this was really funny that happened early in my career. I was in a, a counseling center and one of the guys who was a good friend. So uh, he was working in counseling. And so secretary said, your next client is here. He looked out in the waiting room. It was his family. Oh. And his wife said, you know, you're not giving us time. So we made an appointment. We're going to come in and spend an hour with you. Ouch. Point, point, point was made <laughs> very, very well. So, Ooh. and I think like you said, when we're in ministry, it's easy to think, well, I'm doing something for God or people need our time. A first ministry, and I heard Josh McDowell say this years ago in a conference, your first ministry is your family. Yeah. And I think we have to remember that no matter what we're doing as a parent, as a volunteer in our jobs, whatever that is, mm -hmm. our first ministry is our family. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that, and I think that means exactly what we just said, that it actually is reflected in not just our mind, but actually how we spend our time too. Yeah. If I get, you know, I used to have every... I used to be on boards and committees and there were weeks I was gone four or five nights a week. And to, to look at that and think that's time I could be spending with Nancy or my kids when they were home. And I made the decision then I'm not going to be on anything else that meets at night. And so I haven't been on those except for an occasional meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and not where it's a weekly ongoing commitment like that. Did you ever regret that decision? Never, never. Oh I my can't gosh, imagine. No. Yeah, I can't imagine. Oh. You and and just seeing it in um in Nancy and the, in the kids with their minds. You're home tonight, really? Mm. And I, and I wanted to get past that. I didn't want this to be a novelty. I wanted the novelty to be. Oh, you have a meeting night. Golly, I hate that. You know. Yeah. I wanted that I wanted to flip that. And so it took some time, and it took some time for me because honestly, I was getting some some payoff out of that. I was getting some perks out of it. You know, I'm important. I'm on this board. Well. Did that really matter? Is that going to go on my tombstone someday? You know, right. he, he was gone four nights a week. Wow. You know? no. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good. Well, Dr. Kim, I've really appreciated hearing your advice. I think we're going to try it. I think I'm going to try this marriage check-in now. Now yeah. that you've unpacked it for me. I'm so ready to excited. go with too. I'm going to grab an answer and we're going to get, <laughs> yeah, get back on it. Yep. So do you have any final advice for us on this topic? Well, I, I, my prayer going into this, that this would really be something that you would consider as a couple and that it's something that you would just take that first step, do it for a period of time, do the annual one, go through that and see what it does for your marriage the next year. Start doing the weekly one, just be intentional and then let us know how it goes. I think your marriage is going to improve. I think you're going to feel more connected. I think you're going to say this is definitely worth the time, but let us know what your thoughts are on it. We'd I'd love your feedback. Yeah. Yeah. After the three months, not after the first one. No, no. You got to go three months. You're right. Yeah, you got to do it. <laughs> so I don't want to hear from you till late spring, right? Uh, that's so good. That's so good. But you always do put your email address out there. So we'll see. We'll yes. see. Yeah. Uh, 
I'd love to hear that too. And I'll, I'll let you know how that goes for us. So perfect. Um, well, that's exciting. Thanks for sharing the wisdom. I'm curious to see how this, uh, how this plays out. I got to put, put that on the calendar. So just as a reminder, if you like the podcast, if you enjoyed listening today, please do us a favor, leave us a rating and review of the podcast, wherever you listen. It's a real gift to us when you help take a moment to leave a review. And most importantly, the point of it is it helps more couples find the show so they can begin working on building an awesome marriage. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Email us at info at awesomemarriage.com. We genuinely do love chatting with you and we'll answer your email. Have a great day and do something awesome for your marriage today.